They say that as one gets older, time flies, and I actually cannot believe that a year ago to this exact day, I was sitting in this exact spot, which used to be White Hills Farm that belonged to Mary Slack, and Mike de Kock used to do his pre-training here with his wife Diane, and of course a lot has changed since then, but Mary's had her fair share of good luck on Dubai World Cup night with right approach and Lundy's liability, to mention but two horses that immediately spring to mind, and this year... She'll be represented by a horse called Majestic Mambo. Mary acquired Majestic Mambo from the Peter family. And I do recall distinctly being told by former champion jockey Anthony Del Pesce that Majestic Mambo would be a much better horse once he was gilded. He's always been a good horse, but he put up his hand in the Jebel Hatter with an outstanding performance, sticking doggedly to his task to finish just over six lengths behind the winner, who's an outstanding Group 1 performer himself. Now, Majestic Mambo was a fast-finishing second behind a horse called Surcharge in the Daily News 2000. Do it again right there with them. Good collateral form. And as a result of the vision of a company by the name of Track and Bull, we're able to bring you this update with an up-to-the-minute interview with Mike de Kock at his Reinke's Fontaine Stables just prior to his departure for Dubai, where he'll be preparing the three runners, Majestic Mambo, Yulong Prince, and Mariner Resco, who will run in the two-mile Gold Cup, a distance that he's never competed over before, but looking at his pedigree, bred at Maritzfontein by Silvano out of a Fort Wood mare, there's every reason to believe that he'll get the trip. So without any further ado, let's find out from Mike de Kock what he's expecting as he's pulled three rabbits out of the hat to compete on Dubai World Cup night. 35 million US dollars. That's a half a billion rands worth of stakes up for grabs. We're pretty lucky to get them in. I think uh, they certainly warrant their place on ability. It's just unfortunate that the preparations have been so delayed. But certainly horses like uh, Yulong Prince, Majestic Mamba and Marineresco most definitely deserve their places. There's no doubt ratings, ability. It's good for South Africa. You know, two of the best of our last year's crop. Uh, uh, one of the best of his crop, Madden Oresco, of, of his year. Well, I suppose he, he sort of represents Legal Eagle in many respects on a lot of their collateral form. Well, there you go, yeah. So he represents the best of South Africa. Well, we haven't had ideal preps and probably, you know, doing things we ideally wouldn't do. The horses are in pretty good form and they, uh, you know, they all seem to be... I'm quite excited about the way they're sort of peaking now, uh, albeit we might just be two, three weeks behind the eight ball, but still, I like what I see. You actually said that in January, that it's going to be tight. But there was a hell of a lot to like about uh, Majestic Mamba. I thought he was dogged. Yeah, was, I thought it was a very good run. Um, I, I firmly believe he will and has improved. 6.7, he was beaten. Tough horse, very honest. It didn't go ideally in the race. I probably would have been much happier him further back and finishing at them, where he was handy and got a, a little tired at the end. But that's fine. He had a good hard race, which is what he needed. He had a good blow. So home they come, 420 metres to go into the stretch and first contact shows the way. Still by a length and a quarter, Loxley is down the outside, Century Dream. Now Wooten asks for its effort and Dream Castle comes with a boomer out of the middle. Behind them is Majestic Mambo, but Dream Castle lengthens beautifully once again. Goes by first contact, running on his Wooten between horses, but Dream Castle is a dead set star. Dream Castle is going to race away, getting a little weary, but wins by a length over Wooten. I like what I see now. He just, in the last three, four days, coats turned, he looks well. Um, I mean, you know, of course, we'd love another run going into the race, but, that, that, you know, that's the fact that he, he doesn't. And then hopefully go on to Hong Kong from there with either him or Yulong or both. They've got a nice international race in them. Yulong Prince is the, is the really interesting one because we know um, that he represents at least Do It Again and, and a horse like Rainbow Bridge on collateral form. But he hasn't had the prep, and that's not ideal for you, even with your record. Yeah, it's certainly not ideal at all. I mean, uh, it's common knowledge he was delayed in, in England, bizarrely. L obviously, long-term plans with the source. I think he's, he's another horse that's got a real good, good race in him internationally. Um, as you said, he represents the best of South Africa, and quite rightly so. But they both do. You know, if, if I'm thinking Majestic Mamba only got beaten 6.7, um, I think between him and Yulong... There was a length or two in the daily news. Uh, you know, for me, I, I get quite excited by form like that. Obviously, on World Cup night, they've got to step up a little. There's, there's, there's a lot better horses arriving than they raced with. Uh, horses rated 124, 121, that type of thing. But um, 
Uh, these are, you know, they're two pretty sound nice horses in a good space. Yulong Prince is going to go into the race probably at about 80%, unfortunately. Um, but that's, there's nothing we can do about that. Do you ever envisage yourself being in a position similar to that which Charlie Appleby enjoys? Just this incredible, well-oiled machine that operates out of the desert, flies in from Newmarket. I mean, what an advantage. Yeah, and I just, look, I just don't see us ever getting there, you know. I mean, there's no limit to the funds that they have. Uh, I've been out to see Charlie's place. It's magnificent. Um, you know, you leave there almost depressed. You walk around looking at, um, you know, look at one after the one, a derby winner, champion juvenile, Breeders' Cup juvenile winner. All just taking a, a break here in the summer to go back and raid into the guineas and what have you over there. I mean, it's ridiculous. But they're spending the money, you know. At the end of the day, they're spending the money. They're getting the rewards, which is great for the game. I mean, long may it last Sheikh Mohammed's around, you know, um, in racing. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, yeah, at the, t at the tip of South Africa, uh, we, we, at the end of the day, we, we do quite well for, for where we come from. Um, but I'd love to get onto, you know, a bit more even playing even field. playing field so, so people can have a bit more confidence in investing in, I mean, not that we don't invest in quality bloodstock, but I mean real. You know, when you walk around and you see those horses, you can see the difference between the relatives. We've got the poor cousins and they've got the, the real McCoys. So there's no reason we could never ever get to that. But I mean, you know, one's got to give one's investors confidence uh, if in terms of breeding yeah, and up in the ante in terms of our bloodstock. Uh, and, you know, again, I know I sound like a stuck record. Only export and export on a level playing field is going to change the game for South African racing, nothing else. One final question, Mark. The, uh, the training facilities, um, how have they changed since Nad Al Sheba days? And are they listening to the perhaps, well, definitely legitimate um, upgrading that you've requested, that many people have requested? Yeah, I'd say, uh, well, you know, listening. Uh, that's probably the operative word. Um, uh, certainly, Maidan's dirt track this year is a lot better than it's, I've ever seen it. But it's completely different to Nad Al Sheba, short stretch, tight turns. Um, you know, a, it's not easy to keep horses sound on those. But it, to this year, it's been a lot better. Uh, the sanders have been been a lot better, whereas the back track, which is the... They've still got a tapita there. I mean, that's shot. Uh, you know, that's um, that needs to be replaced. We've got pretty good grass tracks there, which we're lucky, and we can get on the grass four or five days a week. So that's a saving grace.